Gen 5 NVMe SSDs are slowly coming to the market, and Corsair just released their very first Gen 5 drive, the MP700. Compared to Gigabyte's Aorus 10,000 that I've tested before, this Corsair MP700 is supposed to be significantly cheaper and actually in stock, which is already a great way to jumpstart a product. So let's see how it performs, uh, how it compares to the Gigabyte, as well as a bunch of other SSDs, and let's see if it's worth considering a Gen 5 SSD at all. Let's begin. I have a 2TB model right here, but you can also get a 1TB version as well. There is no mention of other capacities, and I think it is a shame not to have a 4TB option as well, because I'm pretty sure that the target audience for really fast SSDs pretty much overlaps with the target audience for large capacity drives. If we look at the specs, we can see that it is built around Fison's new E26 Gen 5 SSD controller and Micron's latest 232-layer 3D TLC NAND. And of course, it has some DRAM cache as well. The 1TB model gets 2GB of DRAM cache, which is twice as much as you would usually find on a high-end Gen 4 drive, and the 2TB model comes with a 4GB cache, so it has exactly the same specs as the Gigabyte Aorus 10,000. That being said, Corsair is a bit more open with their specs, so they list sequential reads and writes uh, of up to 10,000 megabytes per second, which is the limit of this controller, and some random performance numbers as well. Hardware encryption is supported, and you get a 1400 terabyte written warranty on this 2 terabyte model, or a five year long warranty, whichever comes first. Now, Realistically, you are more likely to run out of the five-year-long warranty way before you write 1400 terabytes to a single drive. Even though the power consumption is listed at 10 watts, which does create a lot of heat for a small SSD, Corsair is not including a heatsink, but they do say that you should use your own, like the one that came with your motherboard. But I'll talk about thermals a bit later in this video. Let's first see how this drive performs, uh, and as always, I'm going to start with the PCMark 10 quick test. This is a great benchmark for anyone that wants to add a second SSD to their system, and it is pretty much a bundle of different little tests that replicate all those simple light things we do with our PCs every single day. Uh, things like looking at photos, opening documents, and so on. The MP700 does really well here, with basically the same result as I got with the Aorus 10,000. They outperform even the fastest Gen 4 SSDs by quite a bit, However, there is no reason to buy these high-end SSDs for simple light use cases, so let's move on to something more challenging like this full PC Mark 10 suite. Now, this is a test that replicates a much more intense, more serious, and more consistent use of the drive, and I would say that this is a very useful benchmark to look at if you're looking for a new main drive, for example, or for anyone that needs to run applications that can be heavy on the SSD, like editing videos, for example. And here again, the MP700 ended up basically with the same result as the Aorus 10,000, which puts both Gen 5 SSDs ahead of Gen 4 drives by about 30% if you look at the fastest 990 Pro, and closer to 50% ahead of most other high-end Gen 4 drives. But between the two Gen 5 models, there seems to be uh, no difference at all, which also kind of makes sense because they use the exact same parts. But let's check the PC Mark consistency test. Now, this is an extremely heavy benchmark that stresses the drive nonstop for a very long time. So it's not really relevant for a lot of people, but it is still interesting to see how a drive behaves under such an extreme and multi hour long workload that just pushes the drive to its very limits. And here, the MP700 kind of falls behind with a score of only 433 megabytes per second, which puts it somewhere in the A tier of Gen 4 SSDs, but far behind the 990 Pro as well as the MP600 Pro LPX. It is also far behind the Aorus 10,000, which it should be able to match at the very least, so it kind of does feel like they should check this out, that they should tweak it a bit and probably fix it with a firmware update. But when it comes to gaming, the situation is actually the other way around. In the 3D Mark storage test, which is a combination of benchmarks that include a lot of gaming-related tasks, the Aorus was kind of disappointing, but the MP700 takes the crown, beating the SN850X by about 30%, and the Gen 5 Aorus by about 37%. 
If we look at the gaming results that I think are the most important, like uh, loading times and installation times and update times, it ended up scoring about 125% of the fastest Gen 4 drive I've tested so far, which is the Essen 850X. As I always say, sequential read and write numbers are not that relevant from a practical perspective, uh, as they don't really represent the real-world use of a drive, but it is still very important to check if a drive can reach the speeds that are mentioned in its spec sheet. And here, the MP700 ended up very close to the Aorus 10000 in terms of writes, and it matched it exactly in read speeds. So the output is definitely a lot higher than with Gen 4 drives, but since the theoretical limit of a Gen 5 SSD should be twice as high as Gen 4, I do expect even better numbers with future Gen 5 drives. Now, obviously, any SSD that can transfer 10 gigabytes in a single second needs some form of cooling. But as I said at the start, Corsair does not include a heatsink. Now, they originally planned to launch this drive with a heatsink that had a teeny tiny fan, but luckily they dropped that idea because even a tiny fan on an SSD could be very noisy and very annoying to a lot of people that value silent builds. So uh, they decided to just go without one. But you absolutely do need a heatsink because without it, the drive can begin to throttle in a matter of minutes. So you can use the heatsink on your motherboard or you can go for a simple third party one. Because even with a simple heatsink and a little bit of airflow, the drive was kept under 60 degrees Celsius during a stress test. So for a realistic workload, a similarly sized motherboard heatsink will be more than fine. Corsair is pricing this drive pretty aggressively. Uh, for a two terabyte model, you will have to set aside $290 without taxes in the US, uh, which is about $100 less than the Aura's drive. And as you can remember, they have pretty identical performance in most benchmarks, with the Corsair here being much better when it comes to gaming. So I would say this is a pretty big price drop, especially when you consider the fact that there are not that many alternatives on the market just yet. At the same time, a good quality 2TB Gen 4 drive will cost you around $150 to $200, so even if it's much cheaper than the Aura's drive, you will still be paying a big premium over the Gen 4 drives. And the situation is pretty much the same here in the EU. So the Corsair will cost you 300 euros with taxes, uh, which is about 120 euros less than the Aura's 10,000. So definitely a massive improvement in price when it comes to Gen 5 drives, but still a big premium over good Gen 4 models. So on one hand, I think Corsair MP700 is a nice step in the right direction for Gen 5 SSDs in general. It comes with a significant drop in price and it shows that with some tweaking and some optimizations on the side, it can now show actual improvements when it comes to gaming by anywhere from 25 to 50%, which is very nice to see. But on the other hand, I also think it is still pretty early to get the Gen 5 drives. They just came out and they're not really reaching their full potential just yet. Uh, same as the Aorus 10,000, this MP700 also doesn't push the limits of the spec, and in some benchmarks, like the uh, consistency test, it also showed that there is still some room for improvement there. Uh, not to mention that there are not enough proper games that have uh, direct storage support that could really justify spending this much more money on an SSD. So I do think it is probably wise to just wait a little bit longer to see how all this will mature. And if you just do like being an early adopter and playing with the latest technology as soon as it hits the market, I do think that this Corsair with its aggressive pricing makes so much more sense than the Aorus 10,000. That's all I have for today, but before I go, let's hear it from the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their brand new Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, including the new 12 volt high power cable for the latest RTX graphics cards. And as a little bonus, you get a cozy 10 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and sticking to the end. I do hope this video was interesting enough. And if it was, and you would like to see more videos like this one, do consider clicking that subscribe button. That way you won't miss any of my future uploads. Bye guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.